it's it's very flattering at a personal level to be selected by uh, this body of distinguished organizations. It's also very humbling because um, whilst the award is personalized, but it also symbolizes the work of human rights defenders in Zimbabwe. In 1980, Zimbabwe won independence from the British colonial government. A new government under Robert Mugabe assumed power. There were promises of democracy, respect for human rights, the rule of law and prosperity. The people of Zimbabwe, whether we are black or white, full sovereignty, full democratic rights. These promises turned out to be mere rhetoric. Soon the country became a symbol of corruption, repression and blatant human rights violations perpetrated with impunity by the ZANU-PF ruling party and its state security agents. Out of this situation, a fearless and tenacious lawyer arose, Arnold Tsunga. Tsunga left a well-paying job at a commercial law firm in Mutari to develop a human rights program. The final stroke for me came when I was abducted by yeah, about a group of 20 soldiers in 2002 and then subjected to serious torture. Um, they picked me at gunpoint and they started assaulting me in full view of the uh, public and there were seven of us in the group that was with me who had been picked up, including a pastor. And the assault was so severe and so brutal and so uncalled for that it it made me reflect and say, is it possible to continue practicing law in an environment where there's so much lawlessness? Twenty years after independence, the mood changed dramatically in the country. Whites were blamed for all the problems. So-called war veterans, people who fought for independence 25 years ago, were dispatched to white farmers to claim their land and their farms. Whites were named enemies of the state. This is an, uh, uh, my buurman's uh, uh, homestead, house, that net two uh, uh, years before was aangevallen geworden door a band of 90 uh, Rampokkers noemden wij dat in India vroeger. Uh, mensen die hier de boel gewoon kwamen leegroven. Anyone opposing the government is now a possible target. Illegal city dwellers, 60,000 of them, are the latest victims. Ruthlessly, they are driven from the land. It's no longer going to be possible for us to restore greater realization of democracy and human rights without political transformation. Because uh, there has been a complete corruption of the system of governance where there is no longer any effective checks and balances. There is no longer any accountability. The judiciary has been effectively overrun. The police force has now been politicized and uh, all institutions of protection have been politicized and uh, the law is now being subverted to perpetuate dictatorship and oppression of the Zimbabweans. Sunga, a trustee of Radio Voice of the People, was arrested in February 2006 on charges of possessing broadcast equipment without a license. Since his release on bail, there have been other attempts to intimidate Sunga. They 
first deployed soldiers uh, to my home in a place called Mutare, I'm based in Arari myself, where they arrested at gunpoint two of my workers who work at my residence. And then they abducted them and kept them in a bushy area which the army had converted into a military camp. It took nine hours for lawyers in Mutare to be able to locate them and to secure their release. There had been a signal that had been received from the army headquarters to say that they had been involved in the smuggling of sugar and that my house is a haven of smuggling goods into Mozambique. So when, when they were released, the police had also taken as part of the exhibits uh, 20 kgs of sugar that they found with um, one of my uh, workers at home. And then on the Friday, a week later, after the incident in Mutare, they then visited my house in Arare. And six armed policemen then scaled over the security fence. And then they physically abducted the driver of Zimbabwe for Human Rights and my security guard at home. And uh, these were seen being bundled into a vehicle and they were detained and not to be seen again for the next four days. I think the harassment of human rights defenders globally, the trends, the methods and uh, the practices by the states, by non-state actors who act with the questions of the states, by militias or warlords who control territories, the patterns have become almost generic and universal.